Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Are you alright? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, and welcome back to the Homemade Haven. Today we have some animal maintenance chores that we need to do. We need to trim up um, our goat's hooves and one of our chickens, her feathers, because she's been jumping over a fence. And we also need to um, trim one of our chicken's beaks, which is not a regular maintenance chore that that most people have to do, but every once in a while you'll get those needy chickens and we definitely have one of those. So a lot of trimming going on today. Lots of trimming. Also, we want to go ahead and get some seeds started for our spring garden. So we hope you enjoy. Come on, Sunny, quit. All right, so this is Peep, one of our silky chickens. Peep has had some technical difficulties since day one. She's just a little bit high maintenance. Her beak actually keeps on growing longer than it should, which makes it a little bit hard for her to get food into her beak and to eat properly. So about every three to four months, we have to trim her beak up so that she can eat correctly. I got her. So some of the supplies that you need will be something like some fingernail clippers or some um, maybe cuticle nippers, something that's hard enough to clip like a fingernail because that's about the texture of what their beaks are. Um, I do keep some of this blood stop powder on hand just for when I'm trimming anybody's hooves or toenails or beaks. Chicken beaks also have um, what's called a quick inside of it. So if you cut too low, it could start bleeding. Um, we try really hard not to make that happen, but just in case we keep this on hand and close by. And then I also have a nail file. So after we trim up um, the length of the beak, then we'll kind of file off the rough edges so it's not as brittle and easy to crack on something. So I'm just gonna flip her over on her back and lay her right here on my lap. She trusts me, so she's not gonna try and get away. Okay, so now that you're up close, you can see that her top beak is much longer than her bottom beak. So we wanna try and level this out as best as we can. You can see underneath um, where her quick is. So we're just gonna kinda clip all the way around that quick and stay off of it and try and line this up as best as we can. We're just gonna take the nippers. I promise this doesn't hurt her. It just is like a fingernail. But on your face. But on her face, yeah. I'm sure the position is awkward for her, bless her heart. Yeah, she usually... Her on her back. So. Usually does really well. She's a sweet girl. Okay, so we don't want to get down a whole lot closer because as you can see... Her quick is not too much farther down. Um, her beak doesn't naturally line up properly, but this is the best that we can do for her. This will make um, picking up stuff a lot easier. All right, so we're just gonna take our file and kind of take off any of these rough edges. I know, I know, you're almost done. You're such a good girl. After this, we usually give Peep her own little handful of seeds. Yeah. She's a good girl. So we're gonna go ahead and put her back and let her be on her way. But you can see her beak lines up a lot better. It'd be a lot easier for her to grab some, some food. You ready to go, Peep? Okay. All right, so this is our chicky that needs her wings cut because she keeps flying right over the fencing. She was easy to grab this time because she just got done laying her egg. Thank you for the egg. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is, is it, it is easier with two people. You can do this with one person. Um, if you have a flighty bird, it is easier with two people. But what you wanna do is kind of tuck them like a football right up next to you and just pull their, their wings out very gently to the side and spread them all out. So as you can see, they've got 
and upper set of feathers and a lower set of feathers. So on this chicken, it's kind of easier to tell because of her colors. These gray feathers up top are the ones that we want to trim back. Um, you can trim back the lower ones too, but you just have to be a little bit more careful. Got it? Mm -hmm. You can see where these smaller feathers start. We don't want to go any closer than those feathers on the bottom there. They can bleed if you cut them too low. So um, some people believe in just cutting one wing, like a right wing or a left wing, um, so that it makes them a little bit off balance whenever they go to fly out of somewhere. We're going to go ahead and clip both because I, I think if she's got enough feathers on one side or the other, she's strong enough, she can jump whatever fence she comes to. All right. I'm gonna show them how it's done. Mm-hmm. You see where to go? Mm -hmm. Right here? Yep. All the way around. This doesn't hurt her in any way. Oh. These kind of crappy scissors. Oh. They're not the best scissors. Especially for this. Oh. Good there. So when she flaps this wing, it's not going to catch much air and give her much lift. So if you live somewhere where your chickens don't need to be contained within fencing, you know, this isn't something that you need to worry about. Um, we do live in a suburban neighborhood and we have, you know, dogs and other animals around that we just want to keep our chickens protected from so we like to keep our chickens within the fencing that we put out for them so we do clip our chickens wings and as you can see she's good that didn't hurt her she's just more um ready to get down yeah so we're gonna let her hit the road all right now it's time to catch these goats trim up some hooves this should be entertaining oh yeah My biggest piece of advice is buy you some really good clippers, really sharp ones. It makes things a lot easier. <laughs> this looks un ungoatly. There's unhumanly. This position on them looks ungoatly. <laughs> ungoatly. Okay. There we go. All right, so you can see on Betty's hooves here how this piece is overgrown and the sides are overgrown. Um, this should be all flat where there's no ridges here catching dirt and debris. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. We're gonna take our, take our trimmers. We're gonna go as close as we can to the, the padding of the foot there. Ew. So here is a finished hoof here. Um, this is pretty clean for for a uh, goat that's kicking and wild and crazy. Um, but. <laughs>
Okay, so three down, one to go. Definitely got my workout for the day. Yeah. She's so sweet. She's a good girl. Hmm. Oh, so thankfully we got all of those animal chores done and didn't clip anybody too low and they didn't clip either of us in the face. <laughs> that yeah. is always um, something you have to be careful with with hooved animals and horned animals. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and get some of our seeds started for our spring garden. We're so excited. Can hardly wait to get my hands in some dirt and for things to start turning green around here. Even though um, after spring and, and into fall gardening, you know, we're exhausted, we're tired, we're hot, ready for a break. Um, every time spring rolls around, we're ready to, to get at it again. So we're gonna head into this um, very disorganized shed and see if we can't find our seed starting trays. We have a couple different methods that we're going to use. The first method is going to be these little plastic trays or cells that you probably have seen seedlings or plant starts being sold at your local hardware stores. So what we're gonna do is fill these um, plastic trays with our potting soil and then plant our seeds right inside. And if you notice the bottom, they have openings um, to where they will drain properly, but more importantly, they are designed to sit inside of plastic trays such as these that you fill with water. Your seedlings, as they start to sprout roots, will reach down towards the water and they will water themselves. Um, I know that watering is kind of one of those things that people mess up very easily and this is a method that takes all the guessing work out of it. So once we plant into these trays and water the soil just to deactivate the seed, then we won't have to water these anymore. We will have to refill the water in the tray, but the seedlings will absorb the amount of water that they need to grow and to thrive. These large plastic trays here typically come with a plastic lid that goes on top. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is put this on as soon as you plant your seeds. This will create like a mini greenhouse effect and cause the seeds to germinate a lot quicker for you. So once they have started sprouting, I would say once your trays are about 80% sprouted, you can go ahead and take the lid off and just let them get some fresh air. We're gonna do the same method, but with some containers that we just have laying around the house because we don't have uh, as many of the black trays as what we would like to start. This is actually a perfect setup for our plastic seed trays to fit right in and same concept, we're just gonna fill it with water and let them self wick and feed themselves. You'll want to use short enough trays inside of this where you can put a lid on top for that greenhouse effect like I was telling you about before. So you can do this with any kind of plastic bin as long as it's clear and the sides aren't gonna be too tall to where the um, seedlings can't get sunlight. Go somewhere. <laughs> Get. Lastly, we're gonna use these um, recycled, um, they're kind of like a cardboard material. I think that's what they are, recycled paper cups. And we're just gonna fill them with soil these actually don't have drainage holes, but once they are good and wet from your initial watering, you can notice from the outside how much liquid is in the pot itself. So I don't love these cups um, because they do get soggy and tend to fall apart quicker than I'm ready to transplant them into the garden. But since we are starting spring starts, um, these seedlings can go into the garden a little bit quicker than what summer seedlings could. So I can use this method since we'll be transplanting in just a couple weeks anyways. We want to give our seedlings the best chance to germinate 
inside where it's a little bit warm and once they're up and have their true leaves then we'll transplant them to the garden and we shouldn't have to worry about them too much with with frost and cold weather we're going to be starting all of our winter and spring greens such as kale mustard <laughs> do you mind beets carrots and radishes so let's get started Is that your feet? I smell. <laughs> Golly. Yeah, that's my feet. Stank, girl. Do you want me to put my boots back on? That's all right. We'll maybe they'll air out and <laughs> calm down. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> We're gonna keep all of these indoors for um, a couple weeks, maybe three, four weeks, just depending on how quick they grow. And once they are mature enough to handle the cold weather outside, we'll move them to our garden and continue to keep them covered with our row cover. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll be ready to harvest and have these for dinner. So thanks for joining us today. We hope that you learned something and we hope that you enjoyed. If you have any questions about what you saw in our video today, be sure to leave a comment below and we'll do our best to get back to you. And make sure you also like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.